Welcome everybody to another episode of Dino Times. I'm your guys' host, your friend neighbor Dakota Morgan, animal caretaker, podcaster, dinosaur enthusiast, all the jazz like that, with my lovely girlfriend here. I just love how you're like friendly neighborhood Dakota. And I was just like, I can't, I can't help but think of Mr. Rogers for some reason. I'm definitely far from it on Mr. Rogers. Way from it on Mr. Rogers. Maybe, maybe him from like a mirror universe like the Star Trek oh, one that God, we just no. saw. Oh, God, no. Um, today on Dino Times, guys, we are going to be diving into another facts episode here for you. We are going to be diving into a dinosaur who I actually worked on in the past. Um, even though I kind of, I did work on a Megalodon tooth once, but when I used to do stuff in the paleo lab back in the day years ago here in Arizona, uh, I did actually work on one of the femurs of, uh, Brachiosaurus. So yeah, one of the fossils of them, which was really cool. And it is one of my top favorite dinosaurs. Not it's in my top five. The Amargosaurus is really up there with being my favorite sauropod, but Brachiosaurus is always up there. We have the baby. Where is it? It's like, it's oh, right there. Oh, the baby Brachiosaurus? Yeah, 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 yeah no, it's in my top five dinosaurs. Yeah, no, it's not my favorite one of all time. But we're going to be going over some of the Brachiosaurus facts here today. And for my paleo-loving girlfriend but doesn't know too much about the science, what do you know about Brachiosaurus other than Jurassic Park? Um, What do you mean other than Jurassic Lake? Um... I know. No one else about Jurassic Park. Like, nobody knows anything about Brachiosaurus other than that movie franchise, which I do love. Um... I mean, you have you have taught me a lot about uh, how they are, and then there's my own research, and then not to mention like you know all the video games that we play. But uh, <laughs> um, but like I I know that they're the uh, in the sauropod family, like uh, part of the apatosaurus, which I always call Littlefoot. Thanks, Land Before Time. That's true. Um, uh, Diplodocus, which is technically it, it is kind of my favorite sauropod. I will admit that. Um, but I know that they're herbivores, and they got really long necks. <laughs> All right. Well, let's dive into <laughs> some more facts. And they're super cute. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. They're always cute. And they always get fucked over in movies. Thanks, Terra Nova. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, so today we're talking about little-known Brachiosaurus facts. Oh, God, that scene in Terra Nova. Um, it lived in the mid to late Jurassic period, so it's one of the only dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise in the first movie that was actually from the Jurassic period. Um, its name means arm lizard due to the forelegs being longer than the hind legs. Oh, okay, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's exactly why. It's a weird thing, but Brachiosaurus has been around a long time. I had to so. really think about that. I'm like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> no, no, it was discovered way long ago. So that's why it's got some of those like kind of funky names in a way. Uh, it could reach up to 85 feet long from head to tail and 40 to 50 tons. Yes. Yeah, so a little bit of a big beast, to say the least. I mean, you've seen the movies, and you can see how you could kind of see it, too. They're pretty paleo-accurate with the Brachiosaurus and Jurassic. Yeah, because I, I know that all the different sauropods kind of have different height sizes, because there wasn't... Oh, God, what was it? Wasn't there, like, a s subspecies called, like, uh, like mega dinosaurs or whatever they were longer or whatever i can't i can't remember there's a lot of sauropods i mean there's yeah. like the thing of like a sauropod could be have its neck horizontal or vertical uh very few had it vertical uh saying straight up a lot of them had it horizontally sort of way like a diplodocus and such oh where it's just straight up not like okay yeah okay um i'm looking at our all python q over there a little rescue one she's like it's feeding day um uh, Presumed to actually be cold-blooded or homeothermic uh, metabolism, which means the adults could have lived up to a hundred years. Well, that explains why um, Littlefoot's grandma lived for that long. <laughs> yeah, they could live a long time being cold-blooded compared to some of them which were warm-blooded, uh, some of the dinosaurs as well. So that's one of the interesting facts is that Brachiosaurus could outlive a lot of creatures. Not to say it could, but it could live up to a hundred years. Was a, I think I'm getting this wrong here, but were they buoyant in water? Could they? Swim? No, that's a common mistake. Okay. That was so. No, they weren't buoyant in water. That was a thing that went away in the 60s or 70s, I believe, saying that they needed to be that they could only stand up and they were so heavy they could only stand up in water and the water would keep them afloat and such uh, like that. Way outdated theory. Kind of in that like such. with like the other animals that have that same. Have that same well, theory. The, the th no, it's a theory that they're that they're, they'd be crushed without the water. Yeah. These animals, yeah, no, no, no. They they would go in the water and stuff like that too, but they didn't need it to survive. Uh, 
So we do actually have some debates, actually, with the, with the Brachiosaurus. We do have the debates whether or not it's the same dino as Giraffal Titan, which is Brachiosaurus looking but has more uh, quills slash spikes. But I'm forgetting the terminology on a quill slash spikes on its head. And has a different shape in a way of Brachiosaurus, but kind of looks similar in a way, so, such as Triceratops and Taurosaurus. Okay, I've actually never heard of that other one until you just mentioned it now. But, like... I know there are all differences between the sauropods. Like, I know Diplodocus has the spikes along its its body, and weren't didn't the Patasaurus have like different looking faces than Brachiosaurus? Yeah, they like, were. They, they, were a lot they more did. Elongated yeah, they or did. Like yeah, that. they did. Yeah, they um, did. The thing with the Brachiosaurus was the air sacs up in the, the reason why it's got that weird shape of the head is because the air sacs that were up there in the head. And head cr- and the head crest, which is very fascinating. Okay, so it makes it a lot more rounder, like their head is. Yes, and uh, for the listeners, this is audio only, but I am putting in a picture of Giraffal Titan. So, yeah, it's like I said, it's got some of the quills and such like that on there as well, but nothing you see. It's very, very few as quills on the back and such, but it's very similar to it. So the debate's still going on for Giraffal Titan. Uh, theoretically, though, we're do- do- in the um, words. It's been a while since we've done w- recordings. Different subspecies in the Brachiosaur family. Actually, there is actually a few in the Brachiosaur family. We have Astrodon, Sauroposidon, um, both Ryopasi... Oh, shoot. Ryopaspondylus, and all from different parts of the world. So, yeah, that's there's a few in there. Sorry, I'm butchering these names. Some of them I've never said before this recording. I've seen, but never said. And they're all actually from different parts of the world. Um, and the recent evidence suggests there's one called Quianlon, if I am pronouncing that way. Quianlon. Quianlon. There we go. So there's different subspecies of Brachiosaurus. It's not just the one. I'm butchering these names. It's, Some, it's like you're a substitute teacher trying to. <laughs> more, the more Asian dinosaur names that are out there, the more it's hard for me to pronounce. And I, it's very difficult. Do you, do you know where... Um the brachiosaurus like originate like where they usually united states oh really i believe so yes Mm. uh but like i said a lot of these subspecies are from different parts of the world so that means it is a brachiosaurus family is a global dinosaur which is really really cool um due to its weight though it could not have enough energy to raise its front legs despite what we see in movies cartoons and all that stuff like that because it was a heavy heavy animal you don't see a rhino lifting its front legs anytime soon so it could not go it could not rear its uh, front legs and stand on its hind legs like we see in the movies oh like when they're like in distress or whatever they're like ah. or like Jurassic Park in the yeah. first in you know, the first Brachiosaurus scene yeah no nothing like that at all, to say the least. Uh, and it actually needed, here's some fun facts for the food for you. Brachiosaurus was a mooch because it needed around 880 pounds of plants each day to survive. It's a lot of vegetation. Yeah, and a lot of millennials can't do that with their avocado toast, huh? Hey, 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 don't be knocking I, avocados. I don't like avocados, so I can, I can. Don't be knocking. So that was a little known Brachiosaurus facts for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and you learn a thing or two about this iconic dinosaur. And if you guys do enjoy th- this episode, make sure you guys subscribe for more episodes of Dino Times here on the channel. I'm on Twitter at Dakota Morgan 3, Instagram at Dakota underscore Morgan 97. Before we go, Kayla here, did you learn anything you didn't know before? Um, Yeah, about that uh, gi- giraffe, whatever it's called. Giraffe Titan? Yeah, I did not know about that. Well, Is that where giraffes come from? So thanks, everybody, for joining me here today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and what's, we're going to end it here. Do you want to say it or do you want me to say you, it? You can humor me on that. And remember, folks, science is real. <laughs>